So we'll be watching these, but we have plenty of time to do so. Uh, and they are not immediate, no immediate threats to the United States and no immediate threats for really anything to develop, which is extraordinarily unusual for this time of the year. We've gone two weeks uh, since we've not had a named tropical system in the Atlantic. And this is according to Dr. Philip Klotzbach, of course, who we know well on this program. We talk a lot about his stats and his figures that um, that he he does a lot of digging to find. He said that this is the first time that we've not had a formation, a tropical formation between August 13th and September 3rd since 1968. So we started out the season, Rebecca and Sam, with uh, quite mm -hmm. a, a lot of activity in the month of June. It was very quiet during the month of July. Then we started to get a, a little more active there in August and then poof. Yep. So there's been a lot of chatter on social media and, you know, amongst the meteorological community about what's going on, why, you know, we have the tropical waves coming off the coast, but they're not really tapping into those extraordinarily warm waters that we have. And that's kind of what brought some of those hyperactive forecasts at the beginning of the season. So kind of what's going on, Rebecca, Sam, I don't know if you want to hop in here and talk about some of the chatter that we've seen in the meteorological community. Well, there's been a couple of the couple of things that I've been kind of seeing in kind of want to get y'all's thoughts on it. One thing has been the Saharan dust plume that kind of came across that seemingly kind of, you know, overtook the Atlantic Ocean and was kind of there for quite a while. That kind of helped things out a while. And then also there, I saw a lot of discussion about this large area of cooler water that started to form just south of Africa or just south of the equator on the Southern side of the equator uh, that might have had some kind of impact, or it was kind of unusual uh, to see that. And so that might have been an anomalous type of an event that we don't quite know what's all that about. And is that some kind of factor that we didn't quite see uh, as having an impact on tropical activity in the Atlantic? Yeah, I think uh, some folks described it as a, an Atlantic Nina. Yes. Uh, yes, with those cooler waters. So that certainly could have had an impact. It felt like that encouraged the storms to form a little bit further north. North, that were the, the the waves that were rolling off the coastline of Africa, they hit that cool water, and unless they they moved north into the warmer water, they weren't able to form over the cooler right. waters. So, yeah, certainly one factor there. One of the factors that I, I was reading up on is that we've had a lot of warm air in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which has prevented some of those showers and thunderstorms from, from rising and really tapping into that moisture and growing taller and organizing, uh, which is something that, uh, you know, was hard to forecast. Obviously, we can look far in advance to you know, get get a general idea of what the ENSO is, what we call it as meteorologists. But that's that La Nina and El Nino that we talk about. Um, and La Nina still trying to get its act together. We're still kind of waiting for it to officially form. The waters, though, still cooling in the Pacific. Uh, so we are seeing it you know, developing, but it's not quite established just just yet heading into peak season. We originally thought it was going to be established heading into peak season, which I think would have helped some of these tropic uh, some of these tropical waves form a little bit faster. But since it's not fully developed yet, maybe there's just not uh, not that difference just yet for those tropical waves to kind of tap into. It feels like yeah, this there's season... like a lag. Yes. Yeah, that feels like the season, the timing has been off for everything. We had yes. the, the early start, we had the warmer waters, but we don't have the upper level atmosphere that's conducive to formation. It just feels like this entire season, nothing's quite lining up mm -hmm. for it to really start to fire off. Now, the big yeah. question is moving forward, do these factors kind of uh, change subtly and all come together? Are we still looking at an active season? I'm, I'm curious to know what the next three and four weeks are going to look like because we do have these tropical waves lining up. Up. You know, we do have the warm waters that uh, these tropical waves can tap into. It's just, will the atmosphere allow them to organize? I do think that we're, we're going to see development, you know, between now and the end of the season. I've seen a lot of chatter, too, from, uh, you know, just folks at home saying, well, it looks like we're not going to have a hyperactive season like we originally thought. But I don't want people to let their guard down because it's still very early on in the season. September and October typically see more development than, than any of the other months here. So uh, we still have a long ways to go. And I mean, late September is when Hurricane Ian formed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, is certainly still possible. October, we still have to be mm -hmm. certainly keep our guard up here in Florida with uh, those fronts that start coming down and can push tropical systems yeah. into our state. So uh, I don't want anybody at home to kind of let their guard down just yet.